Uh, we'll move on to topic three, uh, which we'll talk about Japan now. And you can leave this one. Okay, so first off, we were, yeah, we're going to the airport like at like three or four in the morning or whatever because my flight my flight was at like nine, I think, in the morning. So yeah, your flight, flight was at nine. Mine was at like 1030. Yeah, so I was kind of running to the because it, it's kind of like an hour away from like Seoul to well, yeah. The, fir- the first bus wasn't there till like five. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then it takes like an hour. Yeah, so going to Japan, um, obviously, like that's a first experience for all of us. None of us had gone there before, so and for me, like wanting to go there for forever, it was exciting. Um, flight was pretty like pretty lax uh, or whatever because it's weird to think how like Korea and Japan are like again completely different countries and yet um it's the same like two and a half hour flight is like flying to like me flying to Florida essentially but it's in a completely different country which is just insane in terms of like trying to like wrap that around my head uh so we landed in Narita airport um it was pretty. It was pretty smooth going through uh, the customs and everything. It was funny because the guy asked me, "He's like, do you have any marijuana? Do you have any guns?" I'm just like, "Okay, I get I'm an American, but that doesn't mean like literally everything I do is just carry around guns and marijuana." Yeah, like they're de- Asian countries are definitely stricter in in that type of sense in terms of just like what you can bring into the country. Um, but I was. It was fun. Mm. Uh, so uh, once Nate lands, uh, we get our tickets to uh, take the. Basically, we have to take because it's kind of like how in Seoul, where the airport's pretty f- like Narita is pretty far away from like the actual downtown Tokyo, so we take a train like the Keisei Access Line or whatever. It's obviously, just a bunch of tourists. Um, the one difference, like just in general, between uh, Japan or t- uh, Tokyo and like Seoul is that in Seoul, th- it's okay or it's usually okay to talk on the subway, but. In Japan, no one talks on the subway. It's just like, like eerily quiet, like the entire time. And if you're, if you're talking mm-hmm. really loud, people are just gonna give you bad, like weird looks, or just like tell you to shut up or whatever. Um, yeah, that's just definitely something that was just sort of a bit to get used to, at first, just not used to like doing that. Um, we didn't do all that much the first day we got there. We landed on a Thursday because we were because it was kind of an ordeal just getting to the Airbnb. Like we had to take, we had to go to the Sky Tree, or. And that's where like our subway got us off, and then we had to get our, uh, we had to get like the card thing, like the the Pasmo, which is how you get through the subways. Um, another difference between like Korea and Japan is uh, the subway system in Japan is just way more extensive. There's just way more yeah, lines. It's a lot there's more mo- complicated. Yeah, there's way more companies that run um, subway lines, so it's not like in Korea. There's only pretty much one or two companies that run subway lines, just like the main Seoul Metro, and then the one that runs the the subway to or airport like the, what, did the train yeah the train to the airport essentially that's it um whereas there's probably like five or six different companies that run subways in uh in in tokyo so you have to pay for every time you go you switch between companies which is a bit of a different experience uh so once we got that figured out we had to walk to our airbnb um it was kind of an ordeal trying to bring because i had th- i had like uh, my carry-on and two like check-in bags and trying to carry that all the way through like the, like pretty much the the subway stations in japan and i guess in uh, korea are just like their mazes so like there's a bunch of different like exits and that sort of thing and it, um our airbnb was kind of a walk uh but once we got there once we got settled in our airbnb was so tiny it's literally yeah. it was literally just a kitchen like a tiny bathroom and then like the main like sleeping area like how they measure rooms or st- old style rooms in Japan is by tatami mats tatami mats are like the straw sort of like decorative mats that they put on the floor it was three tatami mats wide so literally there was only room for like th- th- three of us like uh, myself Nate and Jacob to sleep and obviously like the, the cabinet which had like the futons and everything it was definitely an interesting experience, like sleeping on the floor or just like doing a traditional style um, thing. I know you had mm-hmm. trouble with it, Nate, because you weren't used to. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's just it was fine. Um, but yeah, it was just like not the most comfortable thing in the world to sleep oh, on a floor. Maybe, um, maybe just because I was so tired all the time that I, I slept. Well, so the first easily. night I was the first night I slept really well. Like I was dead because yeah, we only got like two hours of sleep going from Avengers to the airport. Um. Yeah, I slept like twelve hours that day. <laughs> yeah, you we got there. 
Uh, we went and ate at a little local. So like, it was kind of nice because it was we were in like a very quiet like neighborhood, neighborhood. area. It's like near like um, a school. There was like, a, yeah, there was there. Yeah, there was like a daycare nearby, and like uh, there was like a n- nice little like Buddha sh- Buddha shrine and like a, a couple of like, like Shinto um, shrines, Shinto shrines. Um, but yeah, it was just a really quiet, nice neighborhood. It wasn't. We weren't in like downtown Tokyo, like yeah, what it, you'd expect of Tokyo. Basically, it was like, it was like an anime. <laughs> yeah, it really was like an anime. Like that first picture I took, like, I'm just like, oh my god, it, it looks like an it looks neighborhood. like an anime, like with like the crows going. Like I didn't think that was real. Like just like how loud the freaking crows are, just like in, in like mm-hmm. the suburbs of Tokyo or whatever. Like I thought that was just like all like random anime stuff, but it actually exists. Just like. Like, they do a really good job in anime to just sort of describe how life is in just, like, the city, or just describing just, like, mm-hmm. normal life there. Um, so, anyway, we went to that restaurant. Um, yeah, we went to a, like, small local restaurant nearby. It was funny because, again, um, Nate and Jacob were my lifeline in Korea because I can't speak any Korean. Meanwhile, I was mm-hmm. their lifeline in Japan because yeah, I'm the yeah. only one that can speak Japanese. So... And this restaurant had no English menu whatsoever, so I just had to do a bit of, like, Google translating and just, like, trying to read what katakana and hiragana that I understood. Um, Mm -hmm. And we we lived. We lived, if anything, we got, like, an amazing freaking chicken katsu. It's, like, basically, like, chicken katsu and covered in, like, this, like, egg and, like, all their sauce. Yeah, it was, like, cooked in egg and onion, basically. Oh, my God. Um, Like, I want to go back just for that, like, specific, like, meal because it was incredible. Um Again, just like it's really cheap. It was just like what well, we the first time we were around, we, it was like a discount because I think we were it was like around like six bucks. Yeah, yeah, it was like around like six hundred yen or so. Um, trying to figure out one thing that's a difference between Korea and Japan is that in Japan you use way more coins. Like God, it's so obnoxious. Okay, because I'll, I'll break <laughs> down. Uh, there's because there's a one in terms of yen. There's a one yen coin. There's a five yen coin. There's fifty yen. There's a hundred yen, and then there's five hundred yen as well. Yeah, there's, there's a ten, ten as well. There's a ten. Yeah, so there's there's penny, nickel, dime, um, and then there's a fifty yen coin, and then yeah, there's hundred, five hundred, so a dollar coin and a five five dollar five dollar coin, <laughs> and there's no there's no bills for a hundred or five hundred yen, like a dollar or five dollars essentially. The high, like the smallest bill they have is a thousand yen, which is which like, is like ten dollars. Ten dollars, yeah. So so you're yeah, using like you're using you're, coins most of the coins time. Are, it and, try- <laughs> and trying to Korea's figure out- opposite. Yeah, and and Korea's Korea- all bills. Yeah, Korea's all bills where like you really use the coins. And not to mention there's no there's no pennies, so all of oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot easier to calculate just like bills and yeah, everything. And everything everything ends- in Korea's uh, like a hundred won. Uh, very it- rarely you'll get something in fifty won. Um, yeah, it but, almost always ends in a zero cents, or a five. Yeah. But it's always yeah, it's always ends in a zero or five, and it's usually in a hundred won, which is a dime, basically, because and also for won, ta- a thousand won's a dollar, basically. Yeah. and the, the tax is included, so you don't have to do like yep. any of that stuff. Whereas in Japan, sometimes they don't include the tax all the time. So trying to figure out, yeah. like, like, trying to calculate all of that in terms of coins was an ordeal. And then also trying to make sure we use all of our coins so that we didn't come back, because like for the currency exchange, at least the one I used, they wouldn't take coins; like they only took bills. Um, so I had to make sure, like, all the coins I had I used, which luckily I ended up using all of them. Oh, I didn't. I, I still have a lot, um, unfortunately. But, I mean, like, pretty much my, my my plan was to get rid of my coins. It's just every time I saw a vending machine, i just buy a drink, even if I didn't want anything. Yeah. And I'm not even, it's not even an underestimate underestimating it but there's literally a vending machine on every street corner like it, it, like there are like streets full of like, just like vending machines and um you know they have like hot drinks and cold drinks and like like all these different types of like juice and like coffee or whatever like it's literally like what you see in an anime or whatever so it was pretty interesting mm-hmm. just like getting some getting it out of uh, a machine um so yeah, Nate, you didn't do anything else the rest of that day. I went to the nope. Sky Tree. I slept for twelve hours. Yeah, you you slept great. for freaking twelve hours. I went to the Sky Tree. Uh, unfortunately, and like cause Jacob, Jacob got to go to the Sky Tree, but he went during the day. Or no, he went during the day. He and he didn't go when it was cloudy. That's a th- that, that was my problem. I went when it was cloudy, so I literally like I don't even have any of the pictures on here because I really really couldn't see anything because the visibility was kind of poor, which kind of sucked. But I mean, it was mm-hmm. still pretty cool going up to the Sky Tree. There's a part where it's like, I you know, like. I, 
uh, as someone that's li- that loves like thrill seeking or whatever, like I, I enjoy this part. But there's a part where it's like the the floor is glass, so you can see all the way yeah. down. So I, I love that. I love those things. Um, so yeah, the sky tree itself is like it's not just like the building. There's an entire like mall complex ar- around it, which yeah. we went to the following day um, to pick up yep. Jacob because Jacob couldn't. Jacob had like midterms and everything, so he couldn't leave until. Friday. He couldn't leave until Friday when he didn't have any class. So we went to uh, the Sky Tree because that was the easiest pl- place to meet up with Jacob. Um, in the morning, we had an appointment at the Kirby Cafe store. Unfortunately, we couldn't go to the Kirby Cafe because um, that was like booked for like the next five months or so. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't realize yeah. how popular the Kirby Cafe well, it, It's Nintendo, so everything is going to be popular. Yeah. And it was an anniversary thing, so yeah, because it's like like the forty thirty something anniversary or forty something anniversary yeah. of Kirby. So uh, I bought a lot of stuff there. Definitely, just like this bunch of like Kirby items. There's like Kirby like washi tape. There's Kirby like rock candy <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. There's like a lot of like Kirby stuff. Um, the mall there is actually pretty nice. Um, and the and hat also, you're wearing. Yeah, the hat I'm wearing has Kirby on it. Um, <laughs> so the, for the rest of the mall that's not Kirby stuff one thing you don't really or you see a lot in anime again like my only experience with Japan prior to this was just anime so that's what I'm going to compare it with is you see a lot of like food stalls and just like people like offering food and like mm-hmm. there there was a section of the mall that was just like that where like you could smell it before you could even like see all the food but there's like a bunch of like pastry shops and like cakes and like I like mm-hmm. macaroons and like all this sort of stuff and I'm just like I have no room in my luggage for all this stuff, so or it's gonna go bad before I can take it back to the U.S. And I, I regret. I, yeah. We should have gone because, like, oh my god, all the stuff smelled so good. Yeah, we never actually we didn't actually eat any of it. <sighs> um, but yeah, you bought some clothes there as well. Yeah, from like um, a specific and then we this went company. To like called, a, yeah, the company is called Beams. It's kind of like one of the most popular uh, or most famous uh, Japanese clothing brands. Oh, uh, and then yeah, we went. Uh, there was like a like kind of like a toy store upstairs too that we looked around in, and I got like a thirtieth anniversary Final Fantasy bag. Um, there's an aquarium there. <laughs> yeah, there was an aquarium, which was weird. Like, there's a lot of stuff um, at Sky Tree, surprisingly. Like it's not just going yeah, up to yeah, the tower. And it, it, the weird yep. thing is, is the Sky Tree was only built in like 2011, so all this stuff is pretty much new. So. It, it, Mm-hmm. It's pretty relatively new. Also, there was a lot of students around because again, like we we went around Golden Week or like it was coming up on Golden Week. So I think a lot of people were, a lot of school children were either off early or they school trips or uh, yeah, school definitely field trips because I could see people like getting like souvenirs omiyage, uh, for people. And that sort of thing, and like it's weird. Like again, it's kind of it's such a trope, like seeing like like Japanese school children walking around in the uniforms. But like that's just like a normal thing, <laughs> or, or just like that's a normal thing for like to see like kids walking around in like their school bags or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, once we finally met up with Jacob, we went over to the uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Cafe. Cafe. Yeah, so we went to Tokyo. St- that was which is in Tokyo Station. We went to the Pokemon Center DX, which has the Pokemon Cafe. I'll try to find the pictures of it specifically, just so. You could see what we're talking about, um, which was spent way too much money. Yeah, no, we I I spent a lot of money there. Um, so yeah, the Pokemon Cafe was nice. It was kind. Of, it's kind of like it, it's pretty nondescript, like going there, because <laughs> um, yeah, like the outside of the building just has like Pokemon Center DX or whatever. Like, yeah, like you think you can barely tell. It looks like, like a regular. You think like, it'd be a giant building? like. Yeah, exactly. It looks like an office, but you think it would be like a themed building that looks like a Pokemon Center, and it'd be like a, like a theme park type thing where it would be very obvious. But no, it was literally just looks like a normal office building. But it, I mean, um, going there was just like paradise. There's literally just Pokemon, Pikachu, and Eevee stuff everywhere. Like I got as part of the uh, reservation, you can reserve like s- special goods in advance. So I got these. Uh, and you have your you have the EV one somewhere yeah, in the back, right? It's somewhere, yeah. or somewhere. No, yes. my EV one's up. Uh, actually, is it back there? It, no, it should... it's somewhere else. Yeah, so I think I got it's, it's all over these. It's just like chef and waiter Pikachu. So they had a bunch of that stuff. Um, it was just waiting on our table, which is awesome. Uh, and so basically, how you ordered the food, it was like an, an iPad, and all of the food was just like uh, Pokemon themed. So I got this like Hamburg steak vegetable type thing in the shape of a uh, Snorlax. Um, you guys got, uh, what'd you get? 
again? Just like because you got, I got the, the EV EV, which was just like a, it was like a, it was almost like bulgogi with like rice patties or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then just like random side stuff. Yeah, and the plates were like they were souvenir the, plates that you took home. Yeah, yeah, home. I got the I got the EV plate um, and the EV hot chocolate and the EV mug, um, and yeah, you got to keep like if you you paid extra, you got to keep the mug in the plate. So I have an EV plate and an EV mug. And then they um, had like they had drinks that were like um, that were tailored or named after like specific Pokemon. So like they had like they had like the three legendary birds like the Moltres, um, Articuno. Uh, Zapdos and Moltres, so I got the uh, I got the Zapdos drink. I think Jacob got the. Uh, you mean Thunder? Thunder, yeah. That, it's so funny, like how basic like, the Zapdos names are. Zapdos is literally just called Thunder. And then no, um, this this uh, one of the servers came around, and you had a chance to like win or, like a random coaster, and I got, yep. ended up getting th- I ended up getting a a Zapdos one, which fit well. And then the star of the show, or like the best part, was a, a person came ar- around in like an EV costume and it was so yeah. adorable and they did a dance and like they went up to like everyone and like, everyone was like freaking out even like the adults that were there <laughs> everyone was just like oh my yeah. god it's Evie um yeah it was, it was definitely an experience I know you guys bought a lot more stuff there too as well in terms of just like souvenirs yeah. um yeah I bought like a cup and a towel and some stuff um and going, then we went in the store oh the, the store was just dangerous like i spent i bought like so much food i bought i bought this uh special edition that you could only get this at the t- the the pokemon center dx the, the the one that we went to it was like a store exclusive mm-hmm. one um for because obviously it's april cherry blossom so it's basically pikachu has a cherry blossom afro <laughs> thing going on which is awesome amazing uh yeah i got a kabuki pikachu which is bad thing. yeah the kabuki pikachu you got a but you bought a bunch of vulpix uh, bought a bunch of plushies yeah, uh, yeah there's vulpix. like there's an entire section it's just like a wall full of uh pokemon plushies, plushies. and yeah like a bunch of food they had a lot of, obviously a lot of like pokemon uh trading card game stuff like uh especially for detective pikachu i wish we went the next day if we went the day after that's when the Pokemon Cafe started introducing a new menu for uh, their uh, for Detective Pikachu. Same thing with the store that they were gonna have a Detective Pikachu event, like the day after we went. So we I should have timed it better, <laughs> but still, it was just like paradise going through there. And Jacob bought a luggage like carrier with Pikachu on it because he needed a carry on anyway. So yeah, we spent. So yeah, you we get sp- to walk around. Tokyo with the Pikachu luggage. Everyone was, <laughs> yeah, la- everyone was laughing. Guys at were him. laughing at him. <laughs> yeah, on the subway, it was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, that that was that was probably like one of the highlights. Definitely just going to the Pokemon Center, and I've you've I've, you've, I've heard of Pokemon mm-hmm. Centers and just like how extensive their merchandise is for the longest time. So it was incredible just finally getting to go there. So after that, uh, we went back to the Airbnb to just drop off all our stuff, and then we went to. Like the the most famous place, or like one of the most famous places in uh, Tokyo, Akihabara, which is or Akiba, which is where, basically, that's like the center of like otaku culture, and yeah. um, that sort of thing. So we all the anime and video games, anime video game stuff. There's literally just like freaking maids walking around Akiba, just like trying to get you to go in the maid cafe. We'll get to that later, but um, so like literally, we just walked into random stores that had just like a bunch of like anime stuff. Nate went way too mm-hmm. hard on buying Zoids. <laughs> I bought, well, first we went. First we went to. Do we go to Super Potato first? No, we went to the we went to Kotobukiya first. Oh, we went to okay. Um, so yeah, I bought a couple of Zoids kits because uh, I really liked Zoids as a kid. Um, and screw Gundams. <laughs> Zoids are way better. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know most people think I'm crazy, but uh, yeah. So I got a couple of Zoids kits, and luckily they had kits from the original like series that I watched as a kid, uh, not like the newer stuff. I, they had some newer stuff too, but um, so I got those kits from the original series. Yeah, I didn't end up buying much anime stuff for myself. In all honesty, I was mostly just buying for other people because they, everyone, I wanted like oh, I got I got my cousin like a Godzilla T-shirt or she's like Danganronpa goods or whatever. Um. So after that, we went to. Oh, I didn't a, see it. Oh, I missed Danganronpa. I should have got some Danganronpa stuff. It, it was pretty small. I, I, I'll go. I'll touch it? on okay. that later. It was. It, I couldn't find any. I had to go to like a specific store. Um, 
Mm-hmm. So after that, we just went walking around. I went. To, we went to a maid cafe, which was a very interesting experience. I enjoyed it. Well, we went Jake, to Super Potato first. Oh, yeah, we went to Super Potato. Uh, but, Super Potato is like um, the most famous like retro video game store in Akihabara. Um, mm-hmm. it's very kind of expensive, but I mean, they, it's because they have a, the most extensive. Uh, library in terms of yeah. games and that sort of thing. Uh, we all bought copies of Pokemon Green, which was really funny. Yeah, well, I bought it for my brother, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And Jacob literally bought a po- uh, a Pokemon uh, game, no, a, a game, game Boy, Boy Pocket. Po- Game Boy Pocket specifically just to play. Uh, or was it a Game Boy Light or whatever? No, he got a What's Game Boy different? Pocket. Game Boy oh, Light was a Pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light has a back backlight. Yeah, so um, he he got one of those. Um, then yeah, yeah, I bought Chrono Trigger and. Pokemon Green for my friend and my brother. I bought the only th- games I bought was just Pokemon Green and then Tear Ring Saga. Tear Ring Saga is just like this. Um, it's basically kind. Of, it's like it's made by the same people or people that used to work at um, Intelligent Systems, the people that made uh, uh, Fire Emblem. So it's basically just kind of like a like a PlayStation One era Fire Emblem type game. Uh, so I haven't had a mm-hmm. chance to play it yet, but I, I've been interested in it for a while. Uh, after that, we went to a maid cafe called Maid Dreamin', which was a very interesting experience. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, you guys didn't so much. Jacob and I were not fans. Oh, it, it wasn't that bad. Come on. It It's just awkward. It's like, I don't know. Like, basically, it's, the one we went to, it's literally just like the PG version of a host or hostess bar, um, which is very popular. a very popular thing in Japan. Just um, The idea of a host or hostess bar is... You go there, you buy drinks, you get to talk to like the the host or hostess, um, which is almost always a very 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 pretty person, um, guy or girl, uh, and that's how they make their money. They get you to buy a lot of drinks, drink a lot, that type of thing. Uh, yeah, basically the PG version of that would be maid cafes where um, they're basically dressed up in like maid outfits and they're very cute and they act nice to you, and you have to cast magical spells before you eat your food. Uh, there's a cover charge even. Basically, it's literally like a bar. Uh, so there's creepy uh, old dudes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, like the kind of the, the target demographic for uh, um, them are just one otaku, obviously, because um, obvi- like I, I, the the people that work there are, are otaku themselves. So like they. Like the, the the one of the servers that we had uh, was talking to us about like yeah, Red the Dead one Redemption. that could actually speak English. Yeah, she yeah, was we, nice. We got there. Uh, yeah, she was nice. But yeah, she's my favorite. Like, I mean, it was it was just awkward because like Jacob and I were just like, this is like not something we're really. I don't know. It felt weird, and it was kind of clearly like it was a little awkward for them too because like they didn't know that much English or like it was hard for them. Like the whole point is they're supposed to be there like interacting with you and like just talking with you while you eat or whatever. Um, and yeah, like since like the one knew a decent amount of English, but it was still like a little awkward, but yeah, she was talking to us about video games and stuff. Cause she was talking about how she played Red Dead and other video games like Zelda, so, that sort of thing. So yeah, they Zelda, definitely, yeah. they definitely know what they're talking about when it comes to, oh yeah, I guess you, you have to, if you're ta- if, if you're catering yeah, to like that, your job. Yeah. If you're catering to an otaku bar, you kind of have to be an otaku when it comes to, um, dealing with that. Uh, the food wasn't bad. Um, I got like this curry. Yeah, was, you got you guys. You weren't that hungry, so you just got like this like, yeah, we, huge, we just like got, freaking like, like parfait. Shakes. Yeah, or yeah, parfaits. Yeah, so we did that. Uh, I like the. I didn't get that spicy of a curry, but it was still really good. Um, there's like a part where like they literally just like have a show or whatever, like a performance and like light sticks and everything, and like they have this like mystery box where you could pull out like. A, uh, like a random prize I ended up pulling out just like the fourth one which is like a button but like one guy got like the did like special like cookies or something like that I think it was um yeah I don't know um one guy was just way too got way gone already <laughs> like this old guy just like he all he did was just like drink and whatever and after a certain point he was just like completely gone during the performance uh one of them oh they started playing K-pop at one point or twice at one point and one of them knew the choreography to uh TT or yeah, whatever they- or whatever it was. No, yeah, I don't know. They played one of the Japanese versions of one of the songs. Yeah, Twice songs. Um, and I was like, oh, that's how popular remember. Twice is in Japan. Like, that's one thing I realized, or I didn't realize, just how popular Twice is in Japan. Because, um, yeah, like we we afterwards, I guess I'll mention it when we get to uh, you're the Bushy camera. But um, so after that, we just went to. I just checked out a video game store just to see what they because I wanted to buy a copy of Final Fantasy XII. There sold out. Like I I didn't I never realized just how easily things sell out in in Japan in terms of just like video mm-hmm. games I guess it's kind of niche 
in a way, like Final Fantasy and that type of thing. So it's they didn't have that many copies, or because it, it literally just came like out the day before. Stuff, yeah, physical yeah. copies. It just came out the day before. So I'm guessing that's why they didn't have restocks. So I ended up buying a copy of like Dead or Alive three, <laughs> Beach Volleyball three, or whatever it is, just because the physical copy of that is like going to be a rare like collector's item one day. <laughs> Also, just because the volleyball was pretty fun playing the game, um, though it's it's a lot of work yes, trying to just the like do volleyball. Like, no, like the volleyball it's... actually is really a, a fun part of the game, but a lot of a lot of it's just work just trying to get like enough like coin or like currency to like buy all the different outfits and everything. So it's kind of tedious in that way. Um, it's still kind of a fun game though. Uh, after that, we went to uh, Yodobashi Camera, which is like one of the most famous like electronic department stores in Akiba. Um, it was literally like 10 floors. Like, it was insane. Where, like, yeah. one floor was just, like, computer stuff and phone stuff. Another floor was just, um, like, cameras or just, uh, like, headphones. I got I got a uh, fisheye lens uh, at Yodobashi Camera. That's, a, that's something I was actually, like, looking for there. So it was actually pretty good. And it, the, the, the price was... I got it for a huge discount compared to what I'd have to pay here in America, um, which is really nice in terms of just getting a discount. Um, then what else did we do? There was, like, a whole, like, video game floor and, like, Blu-rays. And they had a whole toy store section where I bought, like... Um, because I was a big fan of Power Rangers. Uh, Power Rangers was originally based off of a show called Super Sentai. And they had the, the new Super Sentai show was uh, coming out. So they just had released like the new uh, toys and everything. So I bought one of the toys there. Very expensive. Like, because in with Power Rangers, like they have like the bunch of like there's five different Rangers and then they put it together and then they make a, make a mega Zord. One of the Zords was just like just one of them, like the tiny one was already like 40 bucks and to build the whole thing like to get like the whole like complete set it would have been like 150 dollars which is insane okay granted again it's it's basically like it's like it's like gundam figures in in a way just like mm-hmm. they're equivalent of that and also the toys are really high quality there so you're not they're definitely not cheaping out uh after that we went to there was a tower records at the, the very top floor and oh my god i mm-hmm. went way too I went way too hard there. <laughs> I bought like, uh, I bought like two. I bought an HKT forty eight CD because Sashi's concert was coming up, which we'll get to in the next topic. HKT forty eight CD, AKB forty eight CD. I bought Perfume's entire discography. I bought, um, I bought all of uh, uh, Utada Hikaru's recent uh, music. I bought like the here. I'm gonna look for it. I bought like I bought I the sing- single to. Uh, don't think twice. Don't think and twice. Oh. Here I have it. It's right here. Face my fears. It's right here. I got it. Yep, got it. He bought this. Yeah, basically, yeah, just like the one, the the song with Skrillex from uh, Kingdom Hearts three. Um, yeah. The nice thing is though, when I went on these shopping sprees, is that all of it was tax free. <laughs> basically, all they had to do is like put the receipt in like my passport, and then I wouldn't have to pay the tax, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I probably spent. I think I spent almost three hundred dollars. Just in CDs at yeah. at uh, at Tower Records, which I did not expect to do. <laughs> yeah, I bought this. I bought SNSD is the best, literally for two songs, because it's not even on iTunes or anything. Yeah. Um. So on uh, Indestructible and Divine are only on this album. Yeah, that's why. Um, that, and then that's why we went to Tower Records because a lot of well, um, yeah. A lot of Japanese artists or Japanese music isn't available on Spotify or iTunes in America, so yeah. you have to you also, still have to go to the physical record stores. This this came out literally like the day before the day we got there, which is Laboom's uh, first Japanese album. Um, so I bought that. Yeah, it as sucks because well. they, they had a fan meet that like around then too, but yeah, we couldn't like go that day or whatever. It was all yeah. the way in like freaking Yokohama or something, but we weren't going there till later. Um, mm. See, that was a, it's interesting to see again both in Korea and Japan just how extensive record stores still are over there because that's really not a thing here in America. Like you, like all we have left is like Fye maybe, and then no yeah, one else. Best Buy, is- best Buy, no, best, no, my Best Buy got rid of its music section. Oh really? Yeah, I think they got mine still has music. Yeah, they they got rid of it. Like it's just it's just Blu-rays and video games now. They they don't they don't even have any CDs. Mm. Yeah, it's so it's interesting to see just that environment still. Um, also, I was surprised at how much K-pop they had in at Tower Records. Like they had, they had Fancy there. Like they literally had just had like a bunch of like tw- Twice and BTS and I think NCT One Two Seven um, just released their album, so they had a whole section for that. Um, yeah, they yeah, K-pop definitely is 
still a, a driving force in Japan, despite having a strong domestic um, market as well. I think that's all we did, yeah, that's all we did uh, that day, which was Friday. Saturday, we went to the Ghibli Museum, which was in out in Mitaka. It was kind of a yep. ways away, because it's kind of in like this park in the middle of nowhere, but... Um, uh, as a big fan of Ghibli movies, and I was trying to like binge watch all the Ghibli movies before we went there, uh, it was definitely enjoyable. Like I got to see like the giant. Um, I don't know if I can find it, but the the robot from uh, Castle in the Sky. Like they have a giant like replica of it in the park. Uh, the only thing is though, we couldn't take too many pictures because the inside museum part you can't take any pictures. Just on the outside or on the the roof is when you can take pictures, but. I still enjoyed mm-hmm. it. It was still like crazy to see all this um, Ghibli stuff and just like how they had interesting exhibits on like how they still like hand draw or like hand uh, color all of it or like ha- the process of making um, the different Ghibli movies. Uh, what else did we do? Oh, we got to see. Um, yeah, short. Yeah, the short sort of thing. Um, so the ticket that they give you um, once you like get in, it's like this film strip type thing and I couldn't tell what film mine was particularly but you show that to the uh, when you go to the theater you show that they stamp it so you can't go in again and they're showing they'd show uh, a short made by Studio Ghibli because Studio Ghibli didn't make just movies they'd make these like shorts or whatever um, so they mm-hmm. showed one I forget the name of it it was like one about like a dog getting lost or whatever so it was a nice short yeah. and definitely it's Studio Ghibli esque um, the one I wish that we got to watch was uh, May and the Cat Bus um, which was it's a short that they made like a, like 10-15 years ago I think and it's only shown at the studio, uh, the Ghibli Museum, so like that's that's actually uh, a really like uh, interesting or rare sort of anime uh, short to see. So it's a it's technically a sequel to uh, My Neighbor Totoro, but it's sort of just like a small short having to do with the little sister May and like the basically like the, uh, the child, uh, a baby version of the cat bus um, from the movie. So they were showing a trailer for it in one of the sections and like again that footage has never been seen outside of the museum so just even seeing the footage there was pretty insane just like just like being able to like experience that was uh was pretty cool um yeah you guys didn't buy much or like see much of else anything so so what were your thoughts uh, on no the yeah i thought it was really cool um to see all that stuff it was cool to see like all the different techniques they do for like making the animation and like layering different parts of the cells and um stuff like that's really cool um but yeah we uh, jacob and i didn't buy anything but we oh, wanted I, to go I to the cafe but the line for the cafe was like three two, hours three long hours already. long because it's 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 that notable and again it was we went on a saturday we went on a saturday yeah, morning so, so it was, so it was busy. very busy with a lot of like children and like parents and families that sort of thing so yeah there was some like new zealand group there i don't know if you oh, noticed really? that i didn't notice like, you know yeah there was a bunch of kids with like uh um with like um hoodies on or whatever that's had like new zealand and japanese flag and it said like cultural club or something oh, so like a culture like exchange a, type of thing yeah a culture exchange type thing it was like a group of kids from new zealand that were visiting japan or whatever but yeah it was very very busy uh, but it, yeah it was cool to see all that stuff yeah i need uh, to we- watch all the all the movies that I own that I've never seen. <laughs> I own, I own all of Miyazaki's movies on Blu-ray, and I've only seen one of them. Yep. Well, I mean, I, I tried to watch as many as I could. I watched. I got to watch uh, Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind, uh, Castle on the Sky. Uh, I watched um, Kiki's Delivery Service, which probably might be my favorite so far, outside of Spirit Away. Um, and then uh, My Neighbor Totoro. Uh, yeah, I just love seeing all that come to life. Um, I went I've, way too I've ham. I've only seen Howl's, Howl's Moving Castle. I went way too ham in the in the freaking uh, the store because mostly because I was buying stuff for other people. Because my friend Kim loves Kiki's Delivery Service, and she didn't. She also happened to be in Japan at the same time that we were. I got to meet up with her uh, later that day, um, but or some other day. Uh, but we didn't get yeah actually later that day but she didn't get to go to the Ghibli Museum so I made sure to get her something um also for Umu because Umu is probably like the biggest Studio Ghibli fan on the face of the universe so I made sure to get her a gift that I guess I won't give her until 
K Con. K Con. I don't know when the next time I'm gonna meet Umu is, but okay. Uh, yeah, just because I know she'd probably want she'd probably want to go there one day. Um, after that, we went to the uh, robot restaurant. Which most of these pictures are from Japan, which was... I'll let you explain it, because you, you enjoyed it the uh, most. <laughs> uh, no, I, like, I don't know. I, you didn't like it? No, I just, like, you were just... It's just, like, insane. Oh, I don't I even just know how to explain go, it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the most touristy thing we see we saw. Um, but, yeah, basically, it's just, like, this, like, kind of like a... Well, it's not even really dinner, because they didn't really give us dinner. I thought they gave us dinner, but apparently they didn't. You have to order the um, bento um, we had to, option. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's kind of like a dinner show type thing. Like, I described it to Jacob as, it's like Japanese medieval times almost, <laughs> um, <laughs> it really where is. it's just like this live show, um, and then like you, there's like drinks and snacks or whatever, um, but yeah, it, it was ridiculous, cause, like, it's just this insanely over-the-top, like, live show with like, um, with like a bunch of animatronic, like, things and just uh people with like crazy stage costumes and just doing yeah. different stuff so, so like, i mean it was split up into four parts yeah um and the first part was kind of like a kabuki theater like musical type thing um uh where there was like two oh, groups and, well and yo, they were doing like a before drum we, before thing. we even get into that i just remembered Yo, know, just walking into the building. Remember, like the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. there's this dude in like the, a robot costume, freaking playing like the piano. Playing piano, and like yeah, just like the, right. the lobby itself was crazy. The, the outside was crazy. Like it's literally just because this is in the heart of Shinjuku, so it's like Shinjuku is just like a weirdest fuck place in general. And it's literally mm-hmm. just like there's like this giant colorful sign that says a robot restaurant. Um, like before even getting yeah. in there, um, there was a lot of it's all foreigners that went there. It's like there's no one. Yeah, it, it's. It's a very touristy thing. It's yeah. not like it was. It was very much. It's very much a show made for tourists. Um, it's. Uh, but yeah, like so. Yeah, like the first part was like this, like drum show, yeah. like like kabuki theater type thing, um, where there's like a group a group of people dressed up as like demons and a group dressed up as like like monks, um, and they kind of just did like a choreography like fight show thing. Um, to drum, and then there was a break, and then the next part was basically Power Rangers, um, <laughs> where it was like robot, like futuristic robot people with like dinosaur <clears throat> mechs and like mini guns and ridiculous stuff fighting like like god people with like animal on giant <laughs> I don't even animals. know how to explain that one. Yeah, it was, insane, it was it basically yeah, like the story they were saying was like robots took over the earth, um, and like. Then, like, there was one part of the Earth that was, like, sacred and protected by the gods, and basically it was, like, yeah, so, like, the robots were just people with, like, dinosaur mechs and machine guns and stuff, and and then there was the gods were, like, people that were riding, like, like giant freaking, animals. Freaking Kung so Fu was, like, Panda giant, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there was a panda, yeah, it was, and like, then it was animals and... One of the da- freaking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comes out with a freaking gat and just shoots one of the... <laughs> just yeah, shoots yeah. up the robots, and then it, Mothra it comes ridiculous. out. Like, basically, all yeah, of this like, is just, like, copyrighted material, which I don't think I can get away with, but it was just craziness. What's uh, yeah. regardless? Um, so yeah, that was definitely the most ridiculous one. Uh, then the next part was basically just a rave um, where they did like a laser show, um, and they're pretty cool. They were uh, dressed up as Darth Maul. <laughs> oh yeah, there was a dude dressed up as Darth Maul. That was weird. and they played the Imperial March, <laughs> uh, which was weird. Um, but yeah, uh, and then the last part was basically just like an idol show almost. Um, where they just they like sang a couple theme songs. Yeah, like there they was, like, showed their names. Song, but yeah, they, they, they were showing their yeah, names. Yeah, they showed and all the names of like the performers. Um and they they played uh uh Boom Boom or was it no, they played Bam and they played I Want You Back uh the Twice version. Yeah, um, they played a lot of K-pop. So they played some K-pop and then they had like a theme song that they sang or whatever. Um, so yeah, it was and just the, this all, weird, all, ridiculous the, the whole stage time, show. it's basically like, think of it as like a parade, but going around this tiny yeah. like basement thing and like the parade floats are just crazy. It's basically like, think of like, yeah. Carnival, yeah, base, think yeah. of like Carnival in like, uh, Brazil. Yeah. Just like 10 times weirder. <laughs> yeah. Just like, Japanese. Oh weirdness my God. Like I, it. I don't even know how to ex- begin to explain it, but, um, yeah. That was that was that's a lifetime experience right there. I'm never gonna yeah, forget. <laughs> I'm never was, gonna forget that. That was that. a weird one, but it was worth it. 
Oh, man. Oh, I'm glad we went. Because I, I know a lot of people say to go, like, if you go to Japan to, to check that out. So I'm glad we did. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, and just being in Shinjuku as well. Just uh, I, We didn't have much of a chance to look around the rest of Shinjuku, unfortunately. Cause, yeah, yeah I, we went to an arcade for a little bit beforehand, but just, like, maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, the, the, where that's where, like, Jacob got to play this basically like, a huge played. mech. Freaking, like, yeah. basically like a, a Gundam game made by, like, Square Enix. Uh, that yeah. sort of thing. But like, like it, you're in like the cockpit and you have like two joysticks and there's like a touch screen to your right. And <laughs> super like crazy stuff. Or like it, most of like the arcade was just like a lot of rhythm games and people were just like going godlike on the, all the rhythm games and everything. It was insane. Just like basically whatever your imagination of Japanese arcades are, it, it's like it's reality. You guys got to play like this weird mm. like actual like 3D Pong type game where it was like you're actually yeah, like, yeah, moving. We played, yeah, was, yeah, that was interesting. It was literally, yeah, it was like actual, it was... Actual objects, it was Pong. Pong, like actual objects, yeah, yeah. Like we were actually moving a physical paddle, and then there was a physical ball that moved between, or like a little square. It, yeah, it was interesting. Um, so then what do we do the rest of that day? You guys just slept. Do do I went to... Yeah, we, oh yeah, you you went and met up with Kim, that's right. Yeah, I met up with my um, friend Kim. Uh, we just crashed. I went, or I was walking around... around uh, I was walking around Shibuya. I took so many pictures at the the Shibuya crossing. Again, you have to if you ever go back, you have to go. Like I think Jacob went, mm-hmm. but it's madness. Yeah, like Jacob. literally, like no one's following the lines. There's like hundreds of people. Like lights everywhere. Um, it's really cool to see. Like the again, we've we've seen this building or like this area so many times in like um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Uh, the world ends with mm-hmm. you. Person- like a bunch yeah. like Persona Five. P- Persona 5. Just like seeing like the uh, like G like the 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 one oh nine Shibuya one oh nine building, just like seeing it. Uh, it's a lot smaller. Like the whole area is a lot smaller mm-hmm. than I initially like expected because they make it because like all the pictures make it seem like so huge. But the, mm-hmm. like Ichimada is like the building itself is like pretty small, and the crossing itself is pretty small too. Like. It's it's not as it's not as huge as you you sort of make it yourself to believe it is, but it's just super busy, and I mean Shibuya is kind of just like the like downtown area. Like there was a lot of like young. It was a Saturday night, so obviously a lot of young people out. Um, I think mm-hmm. I saw a guy throw up at one time, and it was just like ten o'clock at night, so I guess he had too much. To drink. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just mostly just young people like my age going around, um, dressed very nicely. Yeah. Um, I tried to dress nice, so I would I'd blend in, but uh, it was cool. Um, and also just getting to meet up with my friend Kim. Like we've, uh, she's a friend from college. Um, I've mentioned her a lot on the show, but yeah, it just so happened that we ended up being in Japan at the same time. So we just, um, I just popped in uh, to like near near her like hotel, said hi. We went to like a conveni and got food, walked around a bit, but yeah, it was pretty cool to uh, run into uh, my friend like that in like in a completely different country. <laughs> So that that was a pretty uh, inter- interesting experience. Um, so that's Saturday. Uh, didn't do much else, I guess, other than that. But Sunday is the big day. Um, we'll get to the um, Sashi concert afterwards. But um, we, we you didn't do anything though, unfortunately, because you just no, yeah, slept because you, you had you had pretty bad sleeping uh, experience. So it was just Jacob and I going around uh, Akihabara. Um, so. Yeah, going around Akihabara, we had, or I was specifically looking for stuff for, um, like, my uh, my family or just, like, uh, my friends. Um, so we went to Animate in uh, Akihabara, which is, like, a big, like, anime store. The one thing I didn't realize about um, most of the stores there is that they, their selection isn't as extensive as you'd think it'd be. It's mostly mm-hmm. just whatever the literal current anime is right now, that's what they're selling, like, the most of. Like, the big, the most popular thing? Yeah, the most popular and stuff that's currently airing on TV. Like, that's, they're really just, like, up. it's, you wouldn't, you weren't finding any, like, Haruhi or, like, any, like, older stuff, like, you weren't really able to find. It's, they're really, because mm-hmm. that's how fast, like, the anime sort of industry moves that were basically, they want to sell stuff from the current seasons and everything, so that's what most of it was. I think Jacob yeah. bought... Jacob bought the first um, volume of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure in Japanese, so he now owns it in English, uh, Korean, and Japanese. So <laughs> that's an interesting thing. I bought like keychains of like My Hero Academia for my friends and my cousin. Mm-hmm. Um, afterwards, we went to uh, 
we went to this we went to just like around video game stores um a lot of you know they were selling like random like they're selling like random like old video games like but like you could buy like old like freaking ps2s um there we went to the main other place we went to just a picture just came up was uh our radio kaikan or radio kaikan it's like this famous one of the most famous buildings in all of akihabara um specifically if you watch the anime steins gate it's where um like this is basically the, the premise of the beginning of steins gate like a giant like satellite crashes into the building and then like so that's like the most iconic um imagery of steins gate so i just i wanted to go there um but most of it's just like it's literally just like a like all just like um like otaku stuff like the first floor was entirely it was all like trading cards like there was like Yu-Gi-Oh cards <laughs> everywhere and everything um like, i was shocked at how many like card shops there were and selling like expensive mm-hmm. cards too like there were some stores that sold magic but it was mostly like card fight vanguard or Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's where we saw like a 350 dollar yeah, yeah. freaking blue eyes white dragon um in Re- in, Re- in Radio Kaikan, I think that's where Jacob bought a Game Boy Color and Pokemon Gold. <laughs> and basically, that's all yeah. Jacob did was just buy Game Boys. <laughs> buy Game Boys and Pokemon stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we went to, like, we went around, like, the different shops. Um, uh, that That's the store. That's where I, uh, we went to the one of the, I think, what was it called? Um, Ami Ami. That's the store I found, uh... That's a store I was able to find Danganronpa uh, goods at. Mm-hmm. Surprising, because I looked everywhere and I asked, like, and, and they said they didn't carry Danganronpa because it's not that popular anymore, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, that, Ami Ami had a, like, a tiny section of Danganronpa, so I got some stuff from my cousin. Um, most importantly, they had a whole, whole area of just like model cars from Initial D, and I bought one of a Sil, like a, a Sil 80. A Sil 80 is like a Sil. A, a Nissan Silvia mixed with like an SX180 or whatever. It's like a it's like a combined version of the car. So I bought a model of that. Um, it's like what an actual model where you have to paint it and everything and put it together mm-hmm. yourself. So I'll, I'll have to track down the paint. Yeah. I've never done anything like that before. Well, so. I found out. I found out I do have to paint my Zoids. You have to paint your Zoids. Like, oh, wait, they have, have the have... base. They have the base coat or like base colors. But yeah, I, I do need to paint. Like it'll be a good project. Them. Project though. If you know how to do it, are are you good with that kind of stuff or no? It's, I've never tried it, but it sucks because like, it's something I've always thought about doing for like some of my because like I like the Dark Souls board game, yeah, and it has like really detailed figurines for all the bosses, but they're not painted, and but I feel like this is a wormhole I'm gonna fall into. Yeah, he's just I, gonna like, just paint. Figures. If I end up painting the Zoids, I'm gonna have the paint, and then I'm gonna want to paint the Dark Souls figures, and it's like God. <laughs> gonna become a yeah, thing that, I, that's a that's actually a thing i didn't i never realized was how big it was just like diy model kits of just like zoids or gundams or cars Most gundams or, are the big ones obviously yeah, yeah just like there's an there's entire like shelves of just gunpla like in every store essentially it's insane just how much gunpla there is and i've seen gunpla at like comic-con and everything but i never realized just how popular of a thing it was yeah, yeah. And just because it's a time-consuming hobby and like you have to get like all the paint and all that stuff and like the finishing and like you have to put it together um but i mean i'm sure it'll turn out cool if i can if i can dedicate the time to it so mm-hmm. just i guess to, before we go into like the sashi thing just i guess a wrap up of our japan trip just in general so okay. nate you can you can do it First. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It was really cool to be there. I've always wanted to go. Obviously, video games are like probably my only other thing that I've more obsessed with than K-pop. Um. And I don't talk about it a lot here, but yeah, video games are my number one like hobby and stuff. So yeah, it was cool to go to Japan. Um. I think I'd want to go back. I well, I think part of it sucked because like. It was right after Korea, so a week in Korea where I was, like, just exhausted. Yeah. And then, yeah, just not being able to sleep well on the the mats and stuff. Um, So I want to go back with more time um, and less of a packed schedule just so I can have time to just, like, wander around and explore um, at, at, like, a slower pace and then also get an Airbnb that actually has a bed. (laughs) (laughs) Um, um, But, yeah, it was also hard. That's one thing we didn't touch on, just how expensive, like like hotels or airbnbs are in Tokyo. just tokyo is way more expensive than mm-hmm. uh seoul is just like on mass just because like yeah that's that airbnb the tiny place was way more expensive than the one that you got in korea yeah and i was gonna say that yeah the air yeah we the airbnb we got in korea was like a 
we were on the 20th floor, really nice view, like, a really nice, it wasn't a huge apartment or anything, but it was just a really nice, small, like, loft apartment, and it was only, like, 400 bucks for a whole week. Like, it was so cheap. And it was, like, like oh, but that, no, yeah. the, the one that I got was, it was, like, $75 a night <laughs> just for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, that's the cheapest you can um, find, in all honesty, in, in, uh, in Tokyo, in just because it's so there's so many, it's so um, densely packed, or it, it, it's such a hot destination, especially around then being like around yeah. Golden Week. So there's going to be a lot of like people yeah, coming yeah, in. Yeah. So yeah, that's the one thing. Um, and then yeah, the other thing, like it was definitely a lot harder to get around because, like you said, like not I didn't know any Japanese. I can't read any hiragana or katakana or anything. Uh, so it was just a lot harder getting around. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to go back with like a uh, some more time and less hectic of a schedule. Mm-hmm. It's everything that I thought it'd be, in all honesty, just because I've been wanting to go here, f- go there for the longest time, and I enjoyed every second of it, enough to the point that I've already booked my my flight back. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm going back in October. Um, uh, I'm going for a full week this time, uh, just so I have enough time to like see. Because we were really only in Tokyo for like three days, and I yeah, hate was, myself for yeah. not do being there longer. Because I feel like I barely got to see. We barely got to see Tokyo, let alone like there's so much more to Japan than just Tokyo. Like there's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like we barely got to touch the surface of like Tokyo, let alone like going to like anywhere else. So when I go back in October, I want to go because like. They have the bullet train, the Shinkansen, that can take you to, like, the other side of the country in, like, two hours. So, I plan mm-hmm. on taking a trip out to, like, Nagoya, um, uh, and I want to see, like, other other stuff, or just, I want to go to Mount Fuji. I wanted to go to Mount Fuji so bad, just because I, I love, like, mountains and, like, hiking and that sort of thing. Also, there's, like, a, there's Fujikyu Highland, which is, like, a theme park near um, Mount Fuji, so I want to see that. Um, yeah, but with this trip, definitely, I... I'm usually not one per I like I usually just enjoy like staying at home and like not doing anything and just like mm-hmm. like not exploring like it's just kind of ironic considering I work in New York City and I feel like so many people are just like oh why don't you go around New York City anymore because I'm just bored and tired from work all the time so yeah yeah same like I I definitely got like bit by the the travel bug going both to Korea and Japan but I feel like especially Japan like we, when I was t- when I met up with Kim like we were just randomly talking for a bit and we were just like I feel like we belong here to some degree like we we, we both feel like we kind of want to move here one day move there uh, to Tokyo one day just because I feel like it's it's it feels more like home to some degree and I feel like it's I'd enjoy it a lot more than I enjoy it. I, I guess I'm just kind of bored and tired of how <laughs> New York City is to some degree um but that's just further mm-hmm. down the line I mean I, that's, that's something I'm thinking long term but I mean I think I'm just impressed with how much or uh, I could how much I could survive in Japan with the limited uh Japanese knowledge I had like I definitely want to learn more now I'm definitely um more uh incentivized to learn more especially since i'm going back um but yeah i'm surprised at how well i could survive with uh what i knew and yeah it was just i'm glad we d- i'm glad we decided to go to japan as well and to not just stay in korea because uh, i i think i i might have liked korea, uh, japan more than going to korea in all honesty just because i feel like there was so much i wanted to see and do um again mm-hmm. that's why i wanted to go back so uh yeah, definitely yeah, yeah and go ahead Oh, I was just saying, like, for me, yeah, it, it's definitely the opposite, but I definitely want to go back to Japan, too. It's just like you said, like, for me, Korea feels like home, but that's because I live there and it was home. Um, it just feels familiar, and it's somewhere I regret yeah. not being able to go live, because I kind of wish I did go teach English or something at some point. But at this point, I feel like it's a little too late. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's, I, 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 I want to go to Korea, or I want to go to Japan again, for sure. I've I've can I I'd consider I'd consider dropping everything and maybe I mean in terms of my career as a shoe designer there's a lot of companies over in Japan and then maybe a, maybe mm-hmm. that could be a, a future career path for me just working working over there in Tokyo and I'm sure they there's definitely there's probably a demand for like designers that come from the United States over there as well so yeah that, I guess that wraps up our uh, the Japan portion of the trip if there's anything that you thought was interesting that you wanted to comment on or any questions or any advice you'd have for us uh, on when we go back um, definitely uh, let us know in the comments <laughs>